we're going to sum across these. Actually, what we're going to do is subtract. doesn't matter which one we do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this particular equation by minus 1. So this becomes minus the sum of the f's. This will become a minus. This will become a minus. This becomes a minus. And these all become minuses all the way down. And now what we do is we add we add across the columns, yeah? So this, when we add these two things here together, it becomes 1 plus i times sigma f minus sigma f minus the sum of the payments. Must be equal to. Okay. Well, look. Hopefully we can see. We have, ignore this term here for a moment, yeah? We have an f times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. And then we have a minus f times 1 plus i to the n minus 1. So actually, these two terms here cancel. Also, here we have an f times 1 plus i to the n minus 2, and we have a negative version of it up here, a negative, uh, a negative, uh, it's negative counterpart up here, so them two cancel. And you can see that actually all the way down, okay, what we have is these terms cancel out. So we have this telescope effect, yeah, okay, where terms are cancelling out uh, uh, all the way down through this particular, through this particular calculation. So the only things that we're left with are these two. So we're left with f times 1 plus i to the n, Okay, minus f times 1 plus i to the 0. Okay, now we're nearly there. Okay, don't forget what we're trying to get is something that looks like this the total accrual of all repayments. We're trying to get this here. Okay, so how the hell are we going to do this? Well, we want to find a sigma f, so there's a sigma f common here, so let's take it out. So this becomes sigma f the accrual of all the payments times well what's left behind when we take it away here there's a one plus i what's left behind when i take it away here well there's a minus one left behind here so that must be equal to f times one plus i to the n any number raised to the power of zero is one so this just becomes a minus f minus one of our payments yeah and actually what you can actually see here is that this becomes one minus one is zero plus the i gives us i so this becomes uh, i times sigma f is equal to f times 1 plus i to the n minus f okay and what we really have here is therefore okay what we have from here okay okay, okay we have divided across by i that the accrual the sum of all the repayments with the interest that's to be allocated to it is equal to f times 1 plus i to the n minus f divided by the interest rate okay so actually what we've done here is we've actually proven actually this particular part of the formula here okay so really what we have now is we have both parts of the formula we have the cost of borrowing is a simple compounding calculation okay you borrow an amount today over n years well the cost of that borrowing is it's it's the compound yeah of how much you borrowed and also now what we have here is for all of the repayments over all of the years, okay, we've we've reduced these payments or we've summed these payments up into this particular formula here. This formula here, okay, is a sum, okay, it's a sum of a number of finite terms, okay. So this particular formula here represents, okay, okay, it's the sum of all of these particular accruals. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, okay is that this particular formula that we had, let me write it down again, okay? That this particular mortgage annuity, okay? Mortgage sinking fund annuity formula, okay? Okay. Now I've only dealt with this based off a mortgage from the from the rationale uh, from a mortgage perspective. We can also define and use it for what's known as a sinking fund and annuities. Okay, and I'm going to define them in one of my one of my my next videos. Yeah. Okay. But look, this formula is for the annual case. Okay, for the annual case. Okay, that's important. The annual case says that the 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 amount owed at any particular moment in time in an account is equal to a zero plus one plus i to the n. Okay, that's the cost of borrowing plus f times one plus i to the n minus f all over all over i. This is the accrual of your repayments. Okay. In the annual case, okay, maybe we're not dealing with annual, okay? That's if interest is applied annually. More than likely the interest is going to be applied quarterly, okay? So in which case we have to change this, this becomes so in the quarterly case, the quarterly case, okay. Don't forget, if it's applied qu quarterly, okay, it's applied four times. So we have an must be equal to a0 times 
1 plus i over 4, okay, raised to the power of 4, let's say it's 4n, okay, because okay, there's going to be 4 times uh, the number of compounds uh, each year, and say over n years, plus f times 1 plus i over 4 raised to the power of 4n, okay, minus f all over i divided by 4. Okay. It's the same logical argument. Okay, uh, if it is, if if compounding happens in more and more in more situations than quarterly, well then the term here just changes. If it's monthly, this becomes a twelve, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind. And the formula that we're going to be using for the rest of this particular course, okay, is this formula here. We're going to be assuming the annual case, but we might throw in a quarterly case or some other form of compounding compounding later on, okay, or some other form of period of compounding, in which case our formula needs to, our formula needs to change. And I suppose in general, in general, okay, our formula, not continuous compounding, our formula would look like a n is equal to a zero times one plus i over n raised to the power of n t. This time t represents years, n represents the number of compounding periods, okay? plus f times 1 plus i over n raised to the power of nt minus f all over i over n. That this would be our general case when interest is applied. So this is interest is applied. Interest is applied is applied based based on compounding, okay? On compounding. Okay. And discrete compounding. Discrete compounding, not continuous. Okay? If that's okay. Okay, guys, I know this was a very long video. Okay, I'm gonna break it up actually up into parts, yeah, okay. Uh, but once again, uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video was in some way uh, intuitive and more importantly, I hope that was helpful uh, with respect to your understanding of the way the mortgage sinking fund excuse me, an annuity formula works. And thanks for watching.